Hi, my name is Nick Devon, Brisbane's best music writer that you haven't heard of, and welcome back to Radio Friendly. It's been a while, um, been about six months or so since I've uploaded anything, but I thought I'd come back uh, with a list week um, and do the top 30 singles, top 30, top 30 singles, singles and top 30 out of 2018. This video in particular is the top 30 singles of 2018. Uh, I picked 30 because I could only think of 30 um, and what I'm going to do is pretty much just go through uh, 30 down to 10 or 30 to 11 or whatever and then um, just go through my top 10 pretty much. So here we go, Radio Friendly's top 30 singles of 2018. Uh, number 30 we got um, Coolest Monkey in the Jungle by Ski Mask the Slump God. Um, I heard this one halfway through the year. Just thought it was really fucking weird, uh, really weird production for a trap song, so I threw it on the list. Number 29, Wow by Kwame, he, um, Sydney based rapper, saw my big sound early in the year, didn't mind the set, the set was really good, he's got that Triple J Unearthed Artist of the Year as well. Uh, production on Wow was pretty good, threw it on the list. Uh, number 28, song only just came out last week, We Appreciate Power by Grimes, I love Grimes, Fucking couldn't wait to listen to this song. Really, really like the the um, new metal sound that she's got going on the track, uh, and her like eerie, eerily sweet vocals are back again. Big fan of those. Loved it so much. Threw it on the on the list. Number twenty seven is "See You at the Movies" by Jay Mascus. Jay Mascus, of course, from uh, Dinosaur Junior. He this is one of his solo records. Came out a month or so ago. Um, not bad. See you, in, see you at the movies. It's just a nice little like acoustic, semi-acoustic um, track. Maybe it's got a bit of electronic in there too. But uh, I didn't mind it. It's that same J Mascus tone, that sort of um, lazily drone that he has, and uh, pretty good song. Check it out. Twenty-six. We've got Black Paint by Death Grips. Um, this one I just really love the riff and uh, I think it's my favourite Death Grips song off of their album that came out this year. Um, yeah, not much to say on that one. Number 25 is I Dreamt We Spoke Again by Death Cat for Cutie. Uh, I didn't expect to like this album and uh, this song was one of the standouts. I think it's the first song off that album. Uh, just your classic Death Cab. They're missing one of their you know, founding members but it's just a really cool track. I think. A uh, house remix of this would sound pretty cool too. It's just that repetitive um, vocal melody and a really cool um, just chord progression underneath it too. Uh, number 24, we've got Charlotte's Song by Conan Moccasin. I heard this one a few months ago too. I really enjoyed the sort of jazzy guitar instrumentation. It has that real Mac DeMarco lazy uh, production style to it where it almost sounds as if the notes are tuned instead of um, when you're playing the guitar, when you're playing the note, instead of being uh, the notes sliding or whatever, it almost sounds as if the guitar strings are being um, twisted and it has that sort of twangy sound to it, I guess you could call it. But yeah, Conan Moccasin, hadn't listened to him before. Charlotte's Song was a pretty cool track. At um, number 23, The Story of Added On by Pusha T. Pusha T's um, Daytona is, well, one of the earlier videos I did through the year was the top 20, uh, the top, sorry, top albums of the year so far and Daytona I put in there. But the more and more I thought about Pusha T and the single that I wanted to talk about off that, off that album, I kept coming back to the story of Added On, of course the, the beef track, the diss track, the final diss track that he released in that, um, that summer saga that he had with Drake. Um, I just thought it was a hard hitting song lyrically. Um, culturally, it just it was it was Pusha T's biggest thing. I feel like it even overshadowed Daytona to an extent, um, and I really liked the mix he did with Jay Z's um, "Story of OJ." So I threw "Story of Added On" on the list instead of any other Daytona singles. Number twenty-two, a relatively new, well, a really new song came out last week. I'm pretty sure uh, "CRF" by local band Good Boy. I've always loved Good Boy. I think they're one of the best Brisbane bands going, and a lot of people think that around here too. But um, I really love the maturity they're showing on this, uh, that they're, they're showing in their songwriting at the moment. I really enjoyed the horn sections that they've been using in uh, the previous song Soda Bread, as well as 
in uh, CRF as well. Really enjoy that. It just shows a, a a growth, a progression to their music that I'm really happy to see. Uh, number 21, we've got Be Careful by Cardi B. Really, really enjoyed Cardi B's stuff through the year. Excuse me, I'm gonna have a little drink of my coffee. I'm really tired. Um, yeah, Cardi B. Really enjoyed what she's been putting through this year. Of course, um, her album has been skyrocketing charts and all that. But I thought Be Careful was just the sweeter number, the sweeter single that I think was just showed a different side of Cardi that um, I like a bit more. And yeah, threw it on the list. Uh, number 20, we have Skid It by Lil Pump. Skid It, Skid It. Uh, yeah. It's a little pump. This is a little of a little bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, it's just rough and fucking stupid and fun, but it's a pretty hard hitting banger, trap banger. Uh, probably a little pump's best song too, so I threw that on there. Number nineteen, we have um, another guilty pleasure. Uh, we have guilt. Um, sorry, we have Gucci flip flops by Bad Baby, uh, the meme chick of uh, Catch Me Outside. Now a rapper. Bad Baby, um, Gucci Flip Flops, another stupid trap song, real, really stupid. Decent beat behind it and a feature by Lil Yachty. Um, I like it. It's a, I mean, guilty pleasure, but I listen to it a fair bit. At number 18, we have New Things by Freddie Gibbs in Currency. Uh, it's of course coming off of their recent collaborative album. New Things, I just think, is one of the better, well, the, all the songs are really, really good, but um, New Things was just a catchier tune that I, that I thought I'd, um, I'd throw on the list. I should mention too though, forgot to mention at the start of the video, uh, I'm considering all the singles in this list from uh, either, you know, actual single releases or some of them might not actually be released as singles but have mu music videos tied to them. I've counted my list not as the best songs off albums from 2018 but of course, songs that have been released as singles, and some that weren't singles but had music videos tied to them, which we might get to a bit later on. Of course, um, number 17, 4 Out of 5 by Arctic Monkeys. Uh, this album turned a lot of heads. Some fans didn't like it. A lot of the fans of AM didn't really appreciate what Tranquility Bass did. But I didn't mind it, and that's coming from someone who really fucking hates Arctic Monkeys at the moment. Um, I've gone on record plenty of times saying that their first album is what is my favorite album of all time. Four out of five, I feel, is their. I mean, it's the poppiest song on the album. I don't think this was released as a single, but it did have that that um, film clip tied to it, the Stanley Kubrick esque film clip. Um, I like the progression of the song, the build up of the song, and um, yeah, just four out of five, Arctic Monkeys. At number 16, we have Star Surfer 9 by The Gametes. The Gametes, of course, being another band that I've really, really been uh, plugging on Radio Friendly this year. Brisbane band um, released the, uh, a slew of singles through the year, Star Surfer 9 being one of them, before their um, debut album, um, The Calamity of Comet Jones. And, uh, yeah, just a little punky little tune with some uh, sci-fi law tied behind its lyrical content. Great band, great song, great album, check them out. At number 15 we have After the Storm by Kali Uchis. Um, I didn't, this one warmed up to me a lot, I just kept listening to it. The Tyler Creator feature on it's pretty good, but um, she's just a very, she has that really seductive um, well, tone to her voice. It's, it's, um, it's very alluring, very sweet and, and um, very, very sexy. I listened to it, that R&B, Latina sort of vibe coming out. I think she's a Latina. Anyway, Kali Uchis, um, great song. Number 14, we have No Place by Rufus, or Rufus Do Soul, or whatever they're called now. Um, always been a Rufus fan. Uh, no Place was sort of a, a song that sounded a lot like the earliest stuff. Um, whereas, sorry, I'm going to have another sip. Whereas their newer album, I wasn't a big fan of it, but um, No Place was the single that sort of reminded me of the classic Rufus sound. Um, just a good little electronic house banger, I find. At number 13, we have Danny Nadelko by Idols. Um, sort of their poppier, 
punk anthem from the um, the sophomore album Joy as an act of resistance. Um, Danny Nadelko, it's a bit of a well, it's, it's an extremely political track um, about refugees and and I guess what they face over in what we face here in Australia, but also in Britain with Brexit. Pardon me. Um, Idols, fantastic, absolutely fantastic punk band, one of my favourite bands of the year. And um, Danny Nadelko, a great track. Number 12, we have In My View by Young Fathers. This track came out earlier in the year along with the album, and um, yeah, really experimental pop and um, blending elements of hip hop and R&B and electronic music. It just sounded like a very radio, uh, a single that you would listen to on the radio, but transitions into a bit more of an experimental pop vibe. I uh, really love Young Fathers, the Scottish pop band. And um, yeah, in my view. Number 11, we have Hold That Thought by the Brian Jonestown Massacre. Didn't know they were releasing new music at the, the beginning of this year. And um, yeah, I only really started listening to this band at the beginning of the year and it's been one of those bands that I keep coming back to all the time. Really, really glad that they came out with new music this um, this year. I only just heard their new single today too as well. Um, but Hold That Thought, Hypnotic Drums, um, yeah, really love the track. So, um, well, I mean, that's 30 down to 11 at the moment off my list, and I was only going to run through them quickly, but it spoke fair, at fair length about them. Okay, so at number 10, we have Count Me In by Lil Yachty. Count Me In is one of the best beats that uh, Lil Yachty's produced, I find, uh, I've found this year. Um, Count Me In, of course, coming off of the first album he was released, he released two this year. This is off of... Uh, Lil Boat 2, my favourite of the Yachty releases for 2018. Uh, it's a guilty pleasure track because the lyrics, of course, it's Lil Yachty, it's not fucking Kendrick Lamar, but really, really enjoyed, I mean, the track in general. Um, yeah, dumb lyrics, like I said, particularly the verse where he says, it's sweet just like nectar, I run around, I walk around the city of Atlanta with a vector. Um, not the best rhyming scheme there. You've got Yachty's typical mumbling verses, but it's um, it's the bass and, and the beat that are stand out for the track. There are other songs on the album that I like better, but I find out of the singles, um, I mean, this one, of course, calling back to my, my list where there was a music video released for this, not necessarily was released prior as a single. It came out with a music video, so I'm counting it for the list. Um, it's charming, dumb, catchy, and the beat hits hard. At uh, number 9 we have Mainland by Rolling Blackouts Coastal Fever. Uh, another Aussie band. I did a video on Rolling Blackouts on the channel, so check that out if um, you need reaffirming as to why to listen to this single or this album in general. Um, Mainland was one of my favourite tracks. Well, of course it's on the list. It's bright, summery, and every member of Rolling Blackouts has its mo have their moments to shine. Each instrument has its section that you can hear in the song. Really, really well produced track. Um, I love the various guitar riffs that appear, almost like dueling, because there's so many, well, so many guitars in the band. Each guitar has their own section. They they duel, but they complement each other at the same time. Really, really well done. Um, the guitars they elevate the vocals too. Whether that's playing the same melody as the vocals for a bit, it just everything in this song complements each other as well as it being catchy as hell. Uh, it's, it's one of those quintessential Aussie tones I find that's sort of lacking in, in contemporary modern or contemporary Australian music at, at least. Um, Rolling Blackouts of course calling on the older sounds from the 70s and 80s indie and rock of Australian music such as the go-betweens. Um, it's got you know catchy Aussie vocals, guitar riffs, um, the band feel as if they're all jamming along in the background too. Very cohesive sound that the band have um, conjured up. Summery, happy, it reminds me of Australia and that's why I love this, this track, Mainland at number 9. So number 8 we've got Painkiller by Ice Age. Ice Age being the Danish um, post-punk band and uh, I mentioned their, their album in my video halfway through the year on the, my favourite album so far. Um, Painkiller has been one of my favourite singles of the year, right from the start. I heard it whenever it came out at the beginning of the year. 
Um, I love the mix of the royal, the rich horns that, that appear, that, that sort of announce the song as its theme. It almost, um, the royal, the royal tone of the, of the um, horns almost, it's like an introduction to some sort of like devilish monarchy when it contrasts against the sort of the hard hitting twang of the post-punk guitars. Uh, Sky Fieras, Sky Fieras um, backing vocals in it, paired against um, Elias, the frontman of Ice Age. It's hauntingly beautiful. They, I mean, they're both very different vocal tones, but they complement themselves each other very well. Uh, it's a passionate performance. Um, that's both. It's a passionate performance that's both captivating and catchy enough to sing along. Um, yeah, one of my favorite tracks of the year. Number seven is The Fire by The Lemon Twigs. Um, there's a lot I can say about this track because each time I listen to it, I find new things to appreciate. Uh, as a whole, I didn't really enjoy... Like, I haven't really given enough time to enjoy The Lemon Twigs' sophomore album because um, it's just an epic, an epic uh, rock opera, almost. And The Fire has that same characteristic about it. It's a rock ballad that mixes great elements of 60s pop and 70s rock and vice versa. Um, it's epic in its, in its scale as it transitions from verse to chorus. Um, some excellent performance in there from the Lemon Twig Brothers. Um, fantastic instrumentation that incorporates both acoustic and electric guitars. Um, you know, stadium ballad style pianos that you just expect Queen to be playing or Freddie Mercury to be playing. Um, backing harmonies are fantastic and the brothers voices complement each other so well one has a really strong rocky tone to it and the other one has an almost Brian Wilson 60s pop vocal tone to him both work so well together for such a young age too uh, and then there's even a banjo you can hear these are the little intricacies to this song that you hear the more and more you listen to it uh, The Fire is a fantastic track and I don't think it's, it's appreciated enough um, yeah, like I said, it continues to grow and grow each time you listen to it. It's an epic rock ballad and just such an impressive song when you consider the age of the Lemon Twigs. Um, I think they're even younger than me. So just to know that these, these young guys are, are writing this style of music, paying homage to the 60s and 70s rock, as well as sort of almost pushing it forward, uh, it's, it's very, very great to see. At number six, we have uh, Dead Crush featuring Danny Brown, and this is an Alt J remix by The Alchemist and um, someone else that I forgot to write down. Write down in my lyric in my. Um... At number six, we have Dead Crush um, featuring Danny Brown. This is an Alt J remix by The Alchemist. Uh, I'm not really the biggest fan of Alt J anymore. I was when their first album came out, and to an extent, their second album, but didn't really get into this. The, the latest one, but I found the remix of this track, what The Alchemist does with the beat behind it and mixing the Alt-J vocals is fantastic, but really, I consider this a Danny Brown track from the start. Danny Brown owns it from verse to verse, he's fantastic. Um, solid beat, solid mix, um, and it's this real sinister tone to it that I find that Danny Brown can just completely own. He raps over the, the, some of the wildest beats in general, but he just feels like he's in his element in this track. Um, Danny Brown is in, I've said it on Radio Friendly this year, he's up there in my top five MCs of all time. The guy is getting better and better with each project, with each single that he releases. Uh, I can't wait to see more of him. He owns it on uh, this Dead Crush remix, and uh, that's why it's on the list. At number five, we have Potato Salad, the, um, the track by Tyler the Creator and ASAP Rocky. Um, this came out as a little side project thing that I think Tyler the Creator did while he was on tour. Um, the film clip is fucking fantastic. It's it's really really well shot. Um, filmed in Paris, really cool edits. But it's I guess it's the film clip that got me into the track. And each time I listen to it, I fucking I've listened to this song so many times this year. That's why it's on the list. But um, it's got an awesome simple beat, a great flow from both Tyler and ASAP. Um, really, really playful and cheery beat uh, with really, really clever wordplay, especially from Tyler. Um, his double entendres, um, 
really cheeky, cheeky playfulness he has with his words. Um, all shown on Potato Salad, one of the you know best hip hop tracks of the year. And number four for my uh, top 30 singles of 2018, we have Loading the Zones by Kurt Vile. Um, massive Kurt Vile fan, can't get enough of him. And this is just classic Kurt Vile from start to finish. He channels a lot of Tom Petty and Neil Young on this track, which he has done in his previous singles too. But Loading Zones, real catchy. Um, if you're not a fan of Kurt Vile, then you won't like the song in general. It's his, it's his sort of like rambling, nonsense, lyrical um, structure. Uh, but I love the finger picking he does, which transitions into these really, really simple but creative solos. I find he almost channels Neil Young in terms of his soloing, where it's not so much about how many notes he can pick at, at once, or how many notes he can play at once, rather. It's more about space and um, knowing when to hit the next note. And I find that Kurt Vile does that really, really well. Um, knowing when to hit the next note instead of hitting it a lot in succession. Loading Zones is hypnotizing. Uh, hypnotizing finger, finger picking, great solo. Um, like I said, I have a soft spot for Kurt Vile, so this is a bit of a biased opinion coming in at number four. But um, I like to play the style of guitar. I like to play the style of music on guitar as well, so I'm just naturally drawn to this sort of stuff. And that's why um, Loading Zones by Kurt Vile is at number four. So at number three we have uh, the track Fucking and Rolling by Fantastic Furniture. Um, Fantastic Furniture of course being the Australian um, sort of side project of song, uh, singer-songwriter Julia Jacklin. It's a beautiful mix of Julia Jacklin's smoky, sort of folky vocals. Um, against this really, really crisp bass. It's, it's a brilliant mix. Um, the chorus is catchy and infectious. Um, Jacqueline's vocal melody is a standout for me though. She fluctuates her registers between a really, really husky, um, deep vocal range and her this beautifully haunting falsetto style that she goes for. Which is, you know, you can see pairs itself wonderfully with folk but here she has it in a bit more of a upbeat, poppy, rock um, sound. And um, on paper, maybe it wouldn't work, but, you know, Fantastic Furniture, fucking rolling, it's a fantastic song. It, it, I find that each verse, chorus, verse, chorus, ultimately builds into the climax, where the, the, the refa refrain at the end where she says, we're fucking and rolling, and it just feels right. Um, it's just uh, very, very catchy mesmerizing um, experience that when you listen to this track um, it's very satisfying very catchy and that's why fucking Rollins at number three at number two we have pick up by DJ Coz um, DJ Cozy DJ Coz I think Siri and Google say it's Coz so I'm gonna go with that uh, this is just an electronic banger a fucking house banger from start to finish um, I love the old school house vibe to it, the infectious beat and the subtle refrain that uh, Coz mixes in there from the um, the track Near the One of Us by Gladys Knights and the Pips. It's an it's an old soul track from the 70s. He transforms this this real soulful slower track into a fucking house banger. Um, the track builds and never really strays away from that chilled vibe. It builds and builds, but you always you feel contained in this chilled atmosphere. Um, the different sounds Coz uses are always weird, uh, and he does this a lot on the Knock Knock album that this has come from. But he brings them to together to create this cohesive, just electronic banger. Uh, Illumination was another single that would have rivaled this for number two. I only wanted to put one Coz uh, single on there, but I find Pickup was the one that I listened to the most. And that's why it's here at number two. And uh, number one, uh, we have Wide Awake by Parquet Courts. It's, this song, it's simple, but so, so catchy. Um, it's, a, it's, yeah, like I said, simple in concept, but deep down it's quite technical when you, when you sort of hone in on all the different working elements of the track, what Parquet Courts are doing is really, really remarkable. Dissident guitar melodies and, and a lot of syncopated percussion moving in the background. A lot's going on, when you listen to it, it becomes 
when, when you listen to it just as a whole, it's one sound. But then you hone in and you see the different different percussive instruments in general in here. Whether it's, um, well, I'm not going to listen to them, but there's a fucking, there's a lot. It's very Talking Heads inspired with the tribal percussions, the dueling bass and guitar melodies. Um, a lot going on, like I said. It's a clever mix of punk, funk, tribal, uh, just rock, indie rock. It's a song that got me into Parquet Courts this year too. I hadn't really listened to them extently, you know, intensely, sorry. Um, but, yeah, Wide Awake. It's the track that I keep coming back to the most out of anything this year. And, I mean, right now as I'm talking, I have the song stuck in my head, the refrain. Um, yeah, can't get it out of my head, and that's why it's at number one for 2018, Parquet Courts, Wide Awake. And there we have it, the top 30 songs for Radio Friendly in 2018. Um, not much else to say. Thanks for watching. Thanks for keeping up with the content. There'll be a Spotify playlist down in the description for all these tracks in order to. Um, there won't be the life of added on in there though because Spotify doesn't have it and the internet's pretty much gotten rid of that track too. So 29 tracks in the Spotify playlist. Um, hit me up on Facebook, like the stuff, like the content. Keep an eye out for more. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Oh,